so at what point did you find out you would be involved with the show in any performing capacity? Because I know you did more than than just what mm -hmm. what you were most recognized for on the show. No, yeah, for sure. So about maybe a week, yeah, about a week or so before the show, um, my boss, Ryan, Ryan Barkin, he told me and one of the managers that we were going to be helping him out something involved with the show. We didn't know particularly what, and that at some point uh, T-shirt guns showed up to the offices, so we figured, all right, cool, that's what we're doing. And at first we were supposed to go in-ring, but – with time constraints they figured the hot topic people will go in the ring and throw t-shirts out and uh we would do it from the stage which was fine which was cool you know we we were in rehearsals day of going over you know what we we're gonna do and stuff and at a certain point we were backstage where where cody and matt jackson and nick jackson were you know running the show going over things and i overheard matt saying they had a bit and they needed <laughs> 10 people to do it. So without even knowing what it was, I told Matt, you know, I'm friendly with him. So I was like, no, 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 man, you need nine people. I'm in. You know, he's like, you don't even know what it is. I was like, doesn't matter, you know. Any chance that I got to be on the show, you know, I was going to take it. This is the biggest independent wrestling show ever. So, you know, of course, if I get my face on TV anymore, you know, I'm going to go for it. And uh, <clears throat> once they actually told us what it was, uh, I was still in on it, you know. Nick Jackson made it clear, like, hey, you know, you guys are gonna, your faces are gonna be shown. If you're not cool with it, that's fine. Um, as far as I know, none of the other guys that were, you know, originally chosen for it backed out of it. You know, everyone was game for it. Everyone was totally in for it. And yeah, you know, from the get go, the the best part was none of my coworkers knew, you know, my boss got us the first, like, uh, three rows. So it was about 25, maybe 30 of us there. And, uh, yeah, just nobody knew, you know, my boss and my manager, they knew. And probably part of that whole thing was walking down to the ring and just looking directly at where they were sitting and just seeing them all, you know, go crazy, just to lose it. Because as far as they were concerned, I got to use the bathroom, you know? So what are your daily duties with uh, Ryan and one-hour tees and pro wrestling tees to, that help kind of maybe facilitate this? So I'm, for all intents and purposes, assistant manager of the back warehouse. You know, uh, Frank, he's, he's the main back, back end manager. You know, he makes sure everything runs smoothly, and I, I kind of just take care of everything else. Uh, whenever orders come in, be it for one-hour tees, or for pro wrestling tees, I'm the one who unboxes them, makes sure that, you know, this stuff gets printed, this stuff gets shipped out. Um, along with, uh, I help run the pro wrestling crate. Uh, me and Frank, you know, we, we make sure everything gets done. You know, we make sure we have enough people for everything. I, you know, I sort of just run around and whatever Frank and Ryan need, you know. I'm not sure what my official title is. You know, I sort of, originally I started out as, uh, reception. They had just moved into a bigger facility and needed someone to work the front desk. And I was told, you know, you might do some of the wrestling stuff, maybe if they need you. And just slow, you know, I'm not, I'm not really used to working at a desk, you know, especially like a nine to five, just sitting at a desk all day. And slowly, I started. I, I think this was like the first uh, Black Friday sale that I worked there. I just started working more and more with them after hours, you know, on a typical day, like for instance, this week with all the sales that we did for all in, you know, we can be here up to, you know, midnight, one, two in the morning, you know, it just depends how much work we have and how fast we can get through it. And the good thing about having those major sales before is that, you know, now we got it down to a science, you know, we can get it out faster. We have more printers than we had before. It's just, when there's that much work to get done, you know, they only move so fast, but I mean, yeah, I try, I, I do a little bit of everything, you know, I can print, I can do maintenance on the machines. Um, I think the only thing that I really don't do is print the pro wrestling shoes that we do and any of the website stuff. But I mean, anything that I get the chance to learn how to do, you know, I'll go ahead and, and try my best uh, just so that, you know, if someone's not here, 
you know, doesn't hold everybody down. That's the one good thing about everyone here is that everyone typically knows how to do a little bit of everything, you know. So if I, you know, if I have to call out sick or something, you know, I don't have to worry about, oh, no, this isn't going to get done because, you know, there's one or two of the guys or girls who can pick up the slack. So how far ahead of showtime is it that you're having this conversation with the Jacksons about what you're doing? Uh, it was probably right before right before the pre-show because as far as I know, nobody knew what was going to go on uh, with Joey because we, we actually didn't re- even really like rehearse. So this is, know, well, well regar- as- this is a well-guarded secret then. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure how many people knew Joey was back there. You know, obviously the Jacksons and Cody knew, but we we went as, as far as rehearsing. We went as Cody brought brought us out on stage and kind of went over the gist of you know this is what's gonna happen, and you know it, we did as much as we could without actually bringing out any of the costumes or bringing Joey out. And for you know for Hangman Page to just trust us that we'd be able to you know carry him out of the ring in those costumes and not drop him you know i i personally thank him after the show for that you know because that's you know that's awesome of him to trust us to do that because those costumes were weren't the easiest to walk in they were they were a little weird around the around the knees so it, it kind of made it a little hard to walk up and especially having to walk up the stairs you know thank god none of us dropped him you know we we were able to get them out of there. And, yeah, I mean, it was basically done on no rehearsal, you know. We all we all knew what we were doing. You know, we all had our, all right, this is what you're doing, this is what you're doing. But for it to run as smooth as it did, you know, that, that, it's, that in and of itself is awesome. Because, I mean, I, I, I watched it back a few times on TV, and me seeing it, I'm like, oh, my God, you know, we – we got lucky, but I don't know how it came off. You know, people, I, you know, would assume that we went over that practice it a few times, but no, we absolutely had no time to, you know, run through that and carry, carry page, you know, hangman page out of the ring prior, just to make sure we could do it. You know, luckily it just, you know, we had work on our side. Were there any issues like carrying him, any grip, any balance issues? Um, no, not really. It was just, it was going up the stairs that you couldn't look down. So luckily nobody tripped. You know, we all, you, you know, when we were going up there, you know, everyone kind of, you good, you good, you good. You know, I mean, we, we all had, a, you know, we all had them pretty tight. And, or, you know, if we figured if one person can hold them up, you know, they, they drop them a little bit. You know, we'll all sort of put them down a little bit just so that it looks like we're all in unison and not, you know one penis wasn't wasn't as strong as the others <laughs> as is often the case uh yeah so, you know? <laughs> so true to life what were your interactions with with joey ryan if any um i've met joey before um my old roommate matt nix he runs freelance wrestling here in chicago so he's had joey around joey's a real good friend of his um so i've met him before you know here and there but at the show, you know, it was one of those things where I came up to him. First of all, you know, thanked him for letting me be a part of that. You know, it was one thing I did prior and after, you know, not only Joey, but, you know, to Cody, uh, to the box, to Dana, because it it's insane. You know, it, it's one of those things I've talked about where I woke up Thursday and was just excited that I was going to get to work the autograph signing here at the store with CM Punk. And... I somehow wound up as, you know, as a penis on TV uh, in front of that many people. You know, it was just, it was one of those things where it was surreal, you know, especially had like after the show going, I dropped my brother off and I had to explain to my parents like, hey, you know, the context of what it was is just. I was going to ask their know, reception to, to of that, your family and friends in general. Like, like, how do they take that? Hey, what's up? I'm going to be a dick on TV. Well, I mean, again, like I mentioned it earlier, you know, I kept it, I purposely kept it hidden from all the, you know, all my friends there at the show. I, you know, prior to the show, I ran into Marty DeRosa and, you know, he's, and like I said to him, you know, him and Cole Cabana, I, 
explain slash give thanks to, you know, for introducing me to Ryan and because, you know, they were like nice enough to be like, Hey, you should hire this guy. I got to do that. So he was one person I saw before the show that I wanted to tell like, Hey, by the way, I'm doing this, you know, but I, I, I thought, you know, I think I made the right call by just not saying anything and letting them, you know, be surprised by it because after the show, you know, by probably by the time I got back and changed, you know, my phone was just blowing up with friends who were watching the show and were just, you know, we're like, was that you? And I'm like, yeah, you know, and to my wrestling friends, they get it, you know, they, they think it's awesome. They think it's funny, but to other friends that have no idea what, you know, what being the elite is or what all in is explaining it to them is probably even better because explaining, you know, one wrestler who's famous for his penis killed another wrestler who's famous for his penis. And then, you know, he comes back from the dead and we're doing the spoof on the undertaker. It's just awesome to see their reaction, you know, live to see their facial expressions when they're kind of just like, huh? Okay. You know, this is what you're into. That's cool. Um, But I mean, I really had, no negative, you know, reaction to it. Um, I saw you got a little from, hate you know, mail. That, that I got, I got that one hate mail. You know, that one tweet, which I had no idea would blow up to what it is. Like my phone is currently still right now, you know, blowing up with tons of people being positive about it. You know, that's the one thing with Twitter being what it is. I fully expected, you know, like people, oh, that was stupid, or this, this, and that. But aside from that one guy, I really had nobody else say you know mean nasty things you know i had everyone from like david arquette was like yeah i you know, I, I saw that the hate you, you're getting yeah you know to other i like people, i like your response to that me. yeah you know like imagine if i had won the world belt like oh people would have lost it but i mean it's it's, it's been crazy you know like it's, it's one of those things where wrestling is supposed to be fun and I get it if you're into just straight up, you know, New Japan style matches, 20 minutes of, you know, just dudes wrestling. That's cool. I love that, you know, but I also love the fun side of wrestling. You know, one of the, one of the first independent wrestlers I started watching was Colt Cabana. That's how I got into, you know, that's what led to all this. I would go to a show, see him, you know, he's a great technical wrestler, but he's an awesome comedy wrestler. You know, seeing what he does in there, it's just, it's amazing, you know? So seeing the people's reactions of them genuinely being, you know, like, no, that was great. You know, I've had a lot of people like, oh, you know, you know, forget what that guy said. We loved it. And I'm just like, hey, man, I'm just happy you liked it, you know? Like a lot of people are, you know, I'm like, I had nothing to do with it, you know? Thank God that Matt Jackson let me be part of that. Thank God that Joey Ryan let me be part of that, that Hangman Page trusted us to do that because, you know, those guys are the guys you should be thanking. I was just, you know, I was just merely there. I just wanted to be part of the show. You mentioned uh, working the CM Punk signing. Uh, how did he seem there? I know he had a huge crowd. Uh, you know, I, I've i worked with him before at other signings here in Chicago. He typically does this uh, convention. It's called C2E2. Mm-hmm. And me and uh, my manager, Frank, we worked that with him. And, he, you know, he likes doing that. He has some there. This one was just from, you know, from what I could gather, it was just a lot more fun because there was more people there, you know. At the other one, it, you know, it's more, every, it's a comic book convention, you know. So it's tons of people there for other people. But here, everyone was there just for him. And I know he'd been wanting to do a comic or a, a signing at the store since we opened up. But, you know, he, his schedule just, he was always busy. And I he drove here, you know, and did the whole signing on maybe three, four hours of sleep. You know, he was just excited. You know, the dude loves meeting his fans. You know, everyone was cool with him. He was cool with everybody. Um, yeah, he, you know, he had a good time there. Surprise! Nobody asked him if he was all in, you know. I think people either just kind of gathered like he's not, you know, he's over that or he's just not in, you know. But, yeah, he had a good time. You know, he tweeted about it afterwards. He... From what I could tell, he really enjoyed it. Well, I want to thank you so much for for taking the time. Any other lasting memories that you have from this, and maybe maybe any other backstage experiences? Probably the best backstage experience from that was 
every legend, you know, every legend, legendary wrestler who was back there at some point would come up to this big congregation of dicks just watching, you know, whatever match was going on, waiting for a cue, and they'd walk by and make some sort of, like, corny dad joke, which was awesome, you know, it's like, I have Jeff Jarrett or DDP, you know, like, hey, you, you know, you look like a real dick, and again, it's like a corny dad joke, but it's like, what is going on with my life that I'm dressed, you know, as a giant penis, and, you know, I have these, like, legendary wrestlers, you know, making these dad jokes to me, it was just, it was incredible, you know, and then seeing other wrestlers, like, I, I saw Rey Mysterio back there, you know, I saw Kota Bushi guys like that, and as much as I wanted to just go up there and say, hi, you know, I'm Alberta, I'm a big fan, I'm also dressed like a giant penis, and I'm like, ah, you know what, I'll let them get ready and try to catch them after the show, you know? Was there anybody who got maybe a little too friendly with all the dicks? Ah, uh, I mean, it was just really, like, as we were walking down the stage, a lot of people were just grabbing the costume, you know, I think it was just overly excited fans, you know, I know a lot of, uh, like, a lot of the staff uh, backstage, you know, they were asking to take pictures with us, which was fine, you know, it, it was awesome for us, you know, sure, um, but a lot of the fans walking down the ramp, you know, they were the ones grabbing the costume, and aside from that, no real other issue, you know, no one, uh, no one unnecessarily grew up with us in those costumes. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me. Um, I'm, I'm hopefully, yeah. I never thought I'd do a shoot interview with a penis druid, but that's apparently where both of our yeah. lives have taken us. But thank you so much. <laughs>